evidence that this is indeed a haven for beaver. I hate the upper reaches of the gross of the Wolf uh, Wolf Creek, except for the bridge I'm going to under I-80. That's the only reason I'm here to try and actually catch something this time. The bridge, uh, I-80 bridge, the only spot that's fishable or, or smallmouth, at least I don't know uh, about trout, but I doubt it with the mud from here for quite a ways back. And, oh, I do not like how much I'm sinking in here. Let me get up on the mud. I remember it being two bridges, but of course that makes sense, eastbound and westbound. And I know I hooked two and lost two in here, but I'm pretty sure that was with the minnow. So hopefully in this muddy water, pond water, I can actually catch a few, make it worth coming out here. not one single bit of graffiti here or trash. I think it's a safe bet to say I'm still the last person here, which was I think four years ago and probably for many years before that. Looks like a couple trees were cut over there, but that was workers. If I don't catch anything in the next few casts, I'll give it a try with carp since deep, slow, and unable to see means there actually is a good chance there are carp in this hole. I don't remember seeing them last time, but I did get or hook smallies here. It's a pity if I don't get one. Well, I saw a smallmouth follow it and take a nibble, so I guess I'll keep trying a little bit. I had a good healthy strike from a nice big one. I just saw him swim, so I'll keep trying. This is with the spoon now. Lost something which, believe it or not, looked awfully long, not thick, like a trout. I had him, I saw him flash. That's bizarre in this type of water, but I'll keep trying. Another long fish. There's got to be a trout in here. I would not have believed this is trout water. It's not a chub either, but I have to think this is trout water now. I've set up a carp thing just in case there are carp. This is actually an ideal carp area, even though I haven't seen one. And then I'm going to keep trying for this trout I've seen. Soon I'm going to switch to corn actually for it, see if that helps. The final verdict is there are a few fish in here, and I believe there's even a trout. Not a bite from the carp, so I don't think there are carp here. And it's impossible to bait fish without a bobber since uh, I've now lost a hook and ruined a swivel, a good hook. Seems like the moment the corn goes to the bottom and gets snagged and impossible to get out. I'll be lucky to get this carp rig out as well. Let's give it a try. Ooh, okay, at least I got that. It looks like I do need to add a little water since it's all stuck on there still. That is the tree. I had the memory of fishing or hoping to catch something there, but too low and murky. And this time, I, too slow. I don't think there's anything. Looking at that, you'd think this would be awesome, but it's all muddy. And Albeit there are fish up there, maybe there are trout hiding in all of those, but maybe I'm passing up the best part of the creek for trout. Just not interested right now. The two horizontal trees, literally horizontal, one of them has then a vertical tree growing out of it, horizontal from the ground. And again, that looks like a wonderful spot right there. You'd think there's something big, but I doubt it given where we are. No, the odds are super low. I mean, it's it's so deep under there, so many logs. That's and the moving water out there. There's got to be something big here. I can't believe it if there isn't. I saw a couple minnows, so I'll try the two bait and then I'll try corn. Just really be a heavenly spot, and it seems like there's nothing. 
Granted, I haven't cast down there. There's a snag that I'm afraid of hooking on the way up. And, I... and this lure isn't even really meant for pulling upstream, but... And I think it's all because of the sandy bottom up in most of this upper reaches. I still am convinced there's something living there. Maybe it's a muskrat or a turtle and not a fish, but that's an incredible spot. Tree after tree after tree after tree, underneath, underneath, underneath. <laughs> I wish I could put my fish camera down there. Single bite on the tube baits here. I'm curious, <laughs> maybe I'm feeling lost again after those amazing two and a half days. I wonder if it's literally the cloudiness of the water or the temperature of the day. It's peculiar. Not even a bite here. Wow. I thought I had a snag all of a sudden. Come on, buddy. Big boy. Come on. This big guy out. That is a monster. <laughs> all right that was fun that's the first carp I've caught in this part of the pool I've only succeeded over there where there are a couple rocks that pulled me off and this it's never heavy enough to get the bait to the, the corn by itself to the ground that was a fight all right time to throw in another one so it did work and I wish I could have weighed him I, he was at least 11 and a half, like Owens. I'm trying to do double fishing. I've got the other rod under my butt, pushing down so the tip is pointed up so I can see the line. And then what I was worried about 
There's so many rocks around, big rocks in this pool, and the, count, the uh, counterclockwise current pulls the line you know, where it could end up against rocks. I was definitely worried about that last time, but it didn't, thankfully. So this is my poor man's way of fishing two rods at once. And that'd be cool if I had a monster smallmouth and a monster carp on, but I don't know how I would manage it. <laughs> Both of my hands, badly. Oh, and he's in the trees. I don't know if I'll be able to get him. Ooh, that hurt. All right, let's turn this off till I find out a way to get him. Oh boy, I had to break the line. So he's in there somewhere in those trees. And my finger is cut. Both of mine are trying to stop him. <laughs>